everyone. So in today's video, I thought we would do a bunch of first impressions on a ton of blushes that recently came out. I actually asked you all like what video you wanted to see from me and one of the options was trying new makeup. Then I realized that all of the new makeup I have is blush. I have two of the new Dior Rosy Glow blushes that I have already talked to you guys about the cherry shade. Do I have three? I have a new blush, or at least new to me blush from Sigma, their cream blush. I have all of the new Glow Sculpt blushes from Say. Oh no, I've got more. Here we are. I bought two of the new Makeup by Mario blushes, the Soft Pop Plumping Blush Veils. I bought two of the new NARS Afterglow Liquid blushes as well. This one, which I haven't heard a lot of people talk about, the new Tarte Maracuja Juicy blushes. I got the shade Honeysuckle because I love Juicy Lip Plump and Honeysuckle. And then last but not least, I got the new Urban Decay Hydromaniac Blush Glow. You know what, first of all, I think before we get into anything, I need to put something on my lips. By the way, this has been essentially my go-to lip color. It is so easy, it's matte. It's like a matte stain that does not dry out your lips. Seriously, one of my favorite K-Beauty lip products I've ever used. It's from 3CE, I will uh, leave it down below. But yeah, so I don't have anything on my face except for uh, like base product. So for today's video, I'm going to do first impressions of all of these. I don't think my face is going to be happy after this, but we are just going to have to make do with that. So let's first start off with um, a liquid blush from NARS. Afterglow liquid blushes, I have mine in the shade Dolce Vita. I have the shade Dolce Vita, which is you know, basically my favorite NARS shade that they come out with. So I definitely wanted to pick up this one. And then I picked up Orgasm as well. Orgasm definitely was less shimmery than I was expecting. So I was excited to try it out. But I think today, I will give you swatches, but I think today I wanna go with Dolce Vita. Um, this is Orgasm. This is a pretty classic shade as far as NARS goes. Peachy pink with a bit of a gold shift to it. Dolce Vita is just a beautiful rose. Rose is my comfort zone. So I definitely want to try Dolce Vita. It comes in like a doe foot applicator packaging and there is a little divot in the top, which I do think helps to pick up more product. But anyway, I'm going to use the BK Angie Hot and Flashy A507, one of my favorite brushes ever. Just really good for cream, powder, really everything. Let's see how this works. I think it looks really pretty, honestly. I am... Hmm. I can't tell enough yet, but it does kind of feel like... Hmm. Like, it may have removed a little bit of the coverage, but it's hard for me to like gauge that. I'm gonna take a little bit of orgasm and layer it right on top, and I'm going to use a sponge. Oh, that's really pretty. You know, I have a really good feeling about the orgasm shade as kind of like a non-highlight blush highlight kind of product because it doesn't look like highlight once it's applied onto like the cheekbones. It just looks like it's kind of naturally juicy and just has that little bit of a sheen to it. Hmm. I think, you know, right now, first impressions on that are good, but I don't know if I would apply with a brush again. I think a sponge is probably the way to go. I think, you know, just because I can mess around with this, I think I'm going to add a little bit of Dolce Vita. Again, I wouldn't normally do this, but I wanna see how it blends out with a sponge in comparison to the brush that I used. Hmm. I don't know if you guys can see that. I don't know if I like Dolce Vita, that shade. It, for some reason, it's just looking a little ruddy on me. I don't know if it's the blend, I don't know if I already messed it up, but like I just feel like it's kind of looking a little bit choppy in here. But I do think Orgasm, ironically, 
um, just because I'm not always a huge fan of that shade. I think ironically, I'm liking the orgasm shade more. Let's go ahead and remove these swatches and let's get into the next blush. And then I'll kind of have time to let this sit and let my thoughts sit. Yeah, I don't know. Can you guys see that? It is just not wanting to sit there. So that's kind of interesting. All right, but let us venture forth. I think I want to use the Say Glow Sculpt in Quartz Glow. Look at this color, you guys. Isn't that beautiful? It's kind of like bronzy. By the way, this texture of the Say blushes are so interesting. You see how it's like they're cream, but they're kind of cream to powder. They immediately melt down onto the skin. This one looks like it could be really pretty on my eyes. Maybe not like great for the cheeks, but I'm, I'm curious. Honestly, I'm curious about it though. So I kind of just want to apply it and just <laughs> see what happens. I'm going to take the BK 101 and see how this does with application. There is a shift and like a shimmer to these but I have, I think, used them once before. So maybe this isn't like a true first first impression with this product. But that looks, you see how like, it, it's subtle and it just is kind of like glowy and plays up the light. I feel like this is pretty interesting um, and again, this is just my first impression, but there is something really interesting about this shade. I don't know if you guys know this about me. There is a product from Kira Weiss called Inner Glow. And that product for me is essentially like my blush contour hybrid kind of product. It brings like a shape to my face that is so undetectable and really, really pretty. And... I gotta tell you, I'm getting this, like that vibe from this. I think that this would look really pretty specifically as a highlight, but it also, wrong brush, but I also am getting, I don't know, I'm getting a shape from this product that is really exciting to me. I really wanna go find another one of these shades though, just to see like if we can get some more blushy kind of pigment. Okay, I have peach glow here. And this, I think, will do the trick. I see this texture. Like, it's really interesting. Um, by the way, here's Peach Glow right there. It's quite coral. We have this really interesting shade, which is Quartz Glow. There you go. Very. Just, I'm just really in, interested um, in this formula. Let's go ahead and apply some. Oh, that is definitely giving way more pigment than the last one. But, you know, not un unsurprisingly. You know, it's kind of, the whole thing is giving me a very similar vibe to the high blushes from Charlotte Tilbury, but in a different format. They just perform a little bit more as a cream would, I would say. I really am excited to keep using these. I think that there's just, it's doing something a little bit different. Like for example, I do really like the shade Orgasm with the NARS liquid blushes, but I don't know if this is necessarily a completely new different formula. This, this is reminding me of products that I love, but it does feel new. It does feel different. So those are my first impressions on the NARS as well as the new ones from Say. So let's go ahead and do everyone's favorite part, which is, when I say everyone, I mean literally no one. I'm gonna go ahead and remove them. My skin is not gonna be happy about this. By the way, um, I am going to, I'm gonna color correct a little bit just cause I'm, I'm seeing that red come in. But for foundation, I'm using the, ba the Bosma? Bosma foundation in the shade uh, 36. 
and I've just been really enjoying this one. I think next I want to try out one of the ones from Makeup by Mario. So I have uh, two shades that I picked up. I'm interested in this formula. It feels kind of similar to the cream bronzer in the pan. Very similar formula, at least like texturally to that. So here's the shade Just Peachy. Love the shades. I mean, that's something that Makeup by Mario does really well. I really enjoy the shade selections typically. Um, and then Rose Crush I also picked up. So Rose Crush and that is Rose Crush. I think I'm gonna go ahead and not surprise anyone and go with the peach and just see how this goes. That's pretty. Interesting. It's quite dewy um, and sheer, but, but not like too sheer either. I don't know you guys, what do you think about that? I think that looks really nice. Sometimes I just don't wanna go dewy. So I don't know, maybe it's just like the mood I'm in today, but I kinda wish this was less dewy. You can definitely build it up. I'm getting way more pigment there. We'll take a little bit up there. What do you guys think? It blended out really easily and seamlessly, which I think is a great sign. Let's add a little bit of um, Rose Crush and see what happens. I can just take a little bit right here. See if I can't like give us a little shape. Ooh, you notice that? That's pretty. Excited to use this one now to kind of like act as that blush shaping product. But so far so good with this. I wish it wasn't quite as dewy and it does feel like tacky on the skin. I'm not noticing it necessarily like, yeah, actually no. If I really press my finger in, I can like take it off, which I don't know how many of us are doing that or anticipate that kind of thing. But honestly, right now I am feeling good about these. First impressions on the Soft Pop Plumping Blush Veils are good. Now, what's our next blush? I really want to try Dior Mahogany. Now, everyone's been like, what is this going to look like on someone really fair? I want to be that person <laughs> to find out because I just love this shade. I know, I just have a feeling it's not going to go quite as well as I would like, but I almost don't care because I'm just kind of obsessed with mahogany, like Dior Mahogany as a whole. But here goes nothing. What I'm going to do is take this brush from BK, it's the 112, and I'm gonna kind of use it as a contour to see where we end up with that. And then I think on top, I can use either cherry or rosewood. Let me give you swatches real fast. So there's mahogany. Here is cherry, which I have been <laughs> loving, like really, really loving. There's cherry right on top. And I have already given you guys a demo of this one. So maybe I'll, maybe I'll use rosewood on top of mahogany. But there is rosewood. I also love rosewood within the Dior line. You can see it's just a really soft kind of color that I, I feel like rosewood's gonna look good on everyone. But let's go ahead and try, no, not rosewood, mahogany. Let's go ahead with mahogany and see what happens here. I really should have put my hair up before I started this video. All right, just like very gently tapping in here. I'm just gonna see what happens. I'm just kind of pressing it in to see how it interacts with the foundation I have. Take some on the jaw. Honestly, my cheeks look chiseled. I'm, I'm liking that. I don't want to add more because I don't want to mess it up. But do you guys see that? It's like, very, I'll add a little bit more. It's 
very soft kind of contoured effect but but there's also this kind of you know that plum note to it I everyone's afraid to use this shade but used this way look at that like are you guys seeing what I'm seeing comparatively to like that like obviously I really like this too and that's with like a rose blush to kind of plump up and shape the cheeks and this is with a little bit more of that cooler toned blush I really like it I'm excited to actually put rosewood on now to see like how it all how they interact so I'm gonna kind of take this on like higher on the cheek Oop, I don't drop it first Like blend them and see how it looks together. I love this formula within the Dior line. It just, it's so thin that it just melts right into the skin and it looks very refined. Now, not to compare, but this is not necessarily a refined makeup look. It's dewy, it's fresh, and it's really pretty, especially for the summer and it's a look, you know what I mean? But there is something very timeless about a skin-like blush. Like it's always going to look good. And when it blends well, like you can't go wrong. So right now, out of the two, I'm more impressed with this side than I am the Makeup by Mario. But I will say, if I was feeling dry, if I wanted that like glowy, undone, like beachy waves, throw on a little glowy blush and like give me that kind of skin tint look, I would definitely go with this. But if I want more refined, like photograph ready makeup, I'd probably go with these. But wow, I, I don't know why I'm so surprised that mahogany worked out well. I think I've just been hearing over and over again, like, has anyone used it? Because like, it's not gonna look good on fair skin. I'm gonna add a little bit of cherry just because I love it. And look at, do you see the way cherry just like, I put it right under the eye and it gives me like, I've added a lot actually. See how it's just like, oh, Amanda's sunburnt. Oh, just a little sunburn. Ugh, I cannot wait to do a tutorial with this shade. I really wanna do that soon. Anyway, this is, this is definitely serving in my opinion. I really, really like this side. Um, and this is pretty, but again, for more glowy, glow glow makeup. So, all right, I'm feeling good about both sides, honestly, but we still have more cream blush. So let's take this stuff off again. Some blushes left. We have the one from Tarte, the Maracuja Juicy Blush. We have the Urban Decay Hydromaniac Blush Glow Hydrator, as well as the Sigma Cream Blush in Pashmina. I think I wanna use wear this today so I think let's go ahead and try out the Tarte next and this is the shade Honeysuckle I was particularly interested in this shade because again I really like the juicy lip plump in this same shade so here it is oh that's juicy and there's a swatch very plummy. I have a feeling that this is going to last a long time on the skin. It's just kind of like, my, my feeling is that there's good potential for this being a long wearing blush just because of strictly the shade, but also because I feel like this has kind of a staining quality. But let's see. Again, this is the shade Honeysuckle. It's pigmented for sure. I'm, I am feeling the need to kind of like shear it out all over the entire cheek. And I, I could add more just to give you guys the impact on camera, but in person, this is about where I would stop. But let's, let's add some more. You know, it's interesting. Like when you shear it out, it kind of goes, like it's obviously more plum, but it has a little bit of that kind of stained, bitten, thing going on. This is reminding me almost of like a cheek stain kind of product. And I feel like that's really in line with what like what Tarte has been doing. They've been doing a lot of like color changing, pH changing products 
um, like stains and you know stuff like that. I think that's really obviously like trendy right now. It, this is kind of giving me that vibe. Um, it does like I can feel it setting down a little bit um, as well. It looks really juicy on the finger but on the skin it's not like overly dewy. So that makes me excited about this one in particular. I like that it's juicy, but it doesn't go onto the skin too tacky and heavy. Potentially, I kind of want to see some other shades of this too. Like, though this shade is really pretty, I don't know if it's the best shade for summer necessarily for my skin tone. I I'm feeling really good about this one actually. Um, but let's go ahead into the Urban Decay Hydro Maniac Blush. So this is the Blush Glow Hydrator. And I have the shade Obsessed. And I was a huge fan of the Smashbox Halo Glow blushes. And I just feel like this is like so similar. I just, like they kind of act the same on the fingers from what I remember in store. But let's just go ahead and see how this works. It's very thin. I can sense that it's drying down on the finger. Um, it's not too difficult to kind of blend out these edges. I can very thin, it, it's really kind of just melting right in. And when I tap my finger, the foundation isn't coming up under it. Wow. I'm gonna build it up so that you guys can see it. This is beautiful. It does remind me a lot of those halo blushes from, or it reminds me a lot of the ones from Smashbox, the halo glow. Halo glow? It's not halo glow, like the halo blushes. <laughs> halo glow is elf. Wow. Like a cheek stain. Let's read this description together because I'm really, really impressed by this. So it's an insanely juicy flush. There is um, marula oil in here, 24 hour hydration. Really? That's all you're gonna give me? I feel immediately very, 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 very good about these from Urban Decay. I'm feeling great. You know, Urban Decay, when they do it well, I feel like they really do it well. And this looks juicy, but I'm telling you, it doesn't feel heavy on the skin. So that immediately puts like, maybe I'll do a ranking first impression at the end of the video for you guys. And obviously like, it's not final. So don't take it and run with it. But I'm just saying, you know, maybe that would be interesting towards the end of the video. Um, okay. So lastly, we have the Sigma one. So we'll put that on both cheeks. Now to take all this off. I feel like no matter how many times I do it, I make a big deal out of it every time. Part of the reason I love this lip from 3CE is you can just like keep building it and getting like richer and richer pigment. The vibe is already blotted, so you don't have to. It like will very subtly come off, but oh, it's so freaking good. Okay, well, lastly, we have the Sigma blush and then we're gonna do a little ranking. So this is the shade Pashmina and I have not tried this yet. Really, really excited to. And I mean, this kind of color is right up my alley. Immediately in the finger, really, really creamy, but thin and looking quite dewy as well. But then it's kind of going down on the skin. I don't know, it's kind of setting down a little bit. Okay, so that's interesting. As far as texturally, it feels the most similar, I think, to the one from Urban Decay actually. So that's kind of interesting. And how do I want to apply this today? I'm gonna take the BK109 brush. This is great for more like pinpoint blushing, but we can kind of sheer it out as well. Oh my gosh, you guys. 
you know when you apply a product and you're just like, I know I'm going to get along well with you. I feel like as I've continued on with this video, like, I'm finding, I'm like really figuring out the formulas that are working the best for me. And this is definitely one of those formulas. It's just like, does it have all like the bells and whistles? No, but like, does every product need that? Does every product need a shtick? I don't think that it does. This is really pretty. I'm very happy with it. And I'm really adding a lot. <laughs> I'm kind of putting it everywhere. I don't have any bronzer on. Um, so I think I am going to add some bronzer. And then finish up the face and then we'll do, um, go ahead and do some ranking. Okay, so makeup is all done. Let's get into these blush rankings. I gotta tell you, number one, right off the bat, the one that formula-wise I am definitely the most excited about, and this is tough. These top two, I think, are definitely like head-to-head -head at this point. My number one are the Dior Rosy Glow Blushes. I love how sophisticated they are. I love the thin texture. They sheer out over the skin so beautifully. I love that mahogany shade. Honestly, I'm tempted to even add some on top of this, like when I sign off. Coral, which, Coral is around here somewhere. Coral is like one of my favorite blushes I've ever used in my life. And all three of these new shades are really beautiful. Um, and there is one more shade that I don't have. I can't think of the name, but anyway. I, I would say number one pick are definitely these, and I am the most familiar with these, so that could have something to do with it. But second is definitely the Hydromaniac blush from Urban Decay. I'm going to say right away, and I know this might be not what some people want to hear, but I feel like right off the bat, the Urban Decay liquid blushes are going to be less fussy than the ones from NARS. I'm just getting... I'm getting a better first impression, a better ease of use with this one from Urban Decay. I love that they look dewy, but they set down. I think that that's really important, especially in the summer. It kind of gives you that, oh, I'm like a little bit glowy vibe without it feeling heavy. So I would say number two is definitely the Urban Decay in my book. Number three, this is a toss up. Um, number three, I think is kind of a tie at this point between the Say Glow Sculpts. I'm just really interested in these. This isn't an immediate love, but it is an immediate interest. And I'm just wanting to use it more. It has me very curious. So I think that that is very difficult to do <laughs> this day and age with like so much makeup coming out. This has me very interested. However, like immediate, you know, love would be this Sigma, but we've seen this formula before. So that's why I'm trying to like rank them kind of equally in this next spot. I would say if you want just a good go-to blush, a very consistent formula, these are really, really pretty. And I'm honestly wondering what other shades I potentially could have around here. This was a gift. This was gifted to me on like the recent um, creators and friends trip that I went on. Um, this was in the goodie bag and I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't know why I did not wear it sooner. I, I really, really love it. Did any of you guys just watch this? I think it did. Okay. Anyway, but these new Say ones I think are doing something pretty innovative and the formula, just the formula is something I would, I would be on the lookout for. Okay. Next in the bottom two spots, I'm going to say the makeup by Mario. <laughs> Soft Pop Plumping Blush Veils. They are very pretty on the skin, but I feel like they could go too glowy, too dewy, and potentially be too sticky on the skin. But I think I need I need to know a little bit more about these. I need to play around with them a little bit more. They looked really pretty. I just don't know how they're going to wear. And that's like the kind of voice in my head saying, I'm wondering about that. How is this going to wear? Is it going to wear off patchily? And again, they could wear absolutely beautifully, but we just don't know yet. Um, so this, I would say, is like second to last. And last, 
would definitely be the NARS. It just was not, it was not settling down right. The shade Dolce Vita in particular. However, the shade Orgasm, I think looked really pretty as like a blush highlight. And it didn't seem to be doing the same thing that Dolce Vita did. So I don't know if that's shade. I don't know if there is a difference in the formulations or, you know, less pigment just is less fussy, which tends to be the case. Um, and Orgasm definitely was less pigmented than Dolce Vita. So that is everything, you guys. Those were all of my first impressions on all these new blushes. I hope you enjoyed it. Do you guys want me to see this? Do you want to see me do this again? Because I kind of had fun with it. Let me know what product category you might want to see me do this again with. But overall, thank you guys so much for being here. I'll leave everything down below for you guys. And I will see you in my next one.